ओके हाई एवरी वन सो टूडे वील बी स्टार्टिंग आर वीडियोज ऑन क्लिनिकल एक्सामेशन ऑफ द नर्वस सिस्टम सो वील स्टार्ट विथ क्रेनियल नर्व एक्सामेशन एंड द फर्स्ट क्रेनियल नर्व दैट इज ऑल फैक्ट्री नर्व I think all of us are going to agree on the fact that most of us actually forget to examine the first screen in love in the real exam. So even if you do happen to forget examining it, at least you should be able to answer to the examiner what is the proper method of examining this nerve and just two or three viva questions on the disorders of the olfactory nerve. Okay, now let's go into the clinical examination. So how do you examine this nerve? So it's very simple, but make sure that you don't take an irritating substance to the exam to check this nerve. Okay, especially substances that contain ammonia, because what this this will do it will go ahead and stimulate the trigeminal nerve, which will actually trigger a response which can be confused with olfaction. Okay, so if you ask me, the best or ideal substance you can take for the exam is coffee. So the patient is going to easily identify it. You can just uh, pack it and go on the day before the exam. So coffee will be the best, or you can use cloves. cinnamon soap alcohol so these are commonly used ideal substances so you also have certain scratch and sniff test if you know the name of it it's more than enough so you have the university of pennsylvania smell identification test that is upset and the connecticut chemosensory test just know the names of these so now how you're going to examine the nerve so remember you're going to examine each nostril separately so close one nostril the patient's eyes should be closed and examine the side which you're expecting to be abnormal first and then you try examining the normal side and bring the test substance near the nostril and ask the patient whether he is able to identify the odor or smell okay so examine each nostril separately examine the abnormal side first patient's eyes should be closed very very important one nostril should be closed bring the test substance near the nostril and ask the patient to identify the smell so what are the disorders of olfactory nerve okay so they could probably ask your viva question on this most commonly is going to be anosmia okay so absence or no sense of smell hyposmia is where there is a decrease in the sense of smell hyperosmia where there is an acute heightened response or heightened uh, sensitivity to smell next we have dysosmia where there is an impairment or defect in the sense of smell parosmia where there is a perversion or distortion of smell phantosmia is when the patient is going to perceive odors which are actually not present so perception of an odor which is not real presbyosmia just like presbyopia so presbyosmia is where there is a decrease in the sense of smell associated with aging Cacosmia is when the patient is going to perceive bad smells or inappropriately disagreeable odors. Coprosmia is a type of cacosmia where the patient is perceiving a fecal scent, and olfactory agnosia is where the patient is able to uh, tell that there is some sort some sort of odor, but unable to identify or interpret what is the type of odor. So that's olfactory agnosia. Now coming to the most important disorder of the olfactory nerve, that is anosmia. So remember when you're answering viva, try to answer the common things first, followed by the rarer things. So the most common cause of anosmia is very simple; it's just a common cold. So any URT, a common cold, a sinusitis, is going to be the most common cause of anosmia. Okay, 15 to 25 percent of anosmia is because of this. And then presbyosmia due to aging, chronic intranasal cocaine use, certain toxins like cadmium, toluene, chromium, vitamin deficiencies. These three you should remember. Okay, vitamin B12, B6, and vitamin A. Zinc and copper deficiency. very very important and another important common cause and very important cause is head injury so remember head injury can cause anosmia it can also cause parosmia it can cause both of them it can cause both anosmia as well as parosmia so you can answer it for both okay next tumors that are going to involve the orbito frontal surface of the brain like meningiomas of the olfactory groove or the sphenoidal ridge and frontal lobe tumors especially gliomas especially gliomas okay so these can cause unilateral anosmia so that's why it's so important that you examine each nostril separately okay because certain conditions are going to cause unilateral anosmia and very very important neurodegenerative disorders alzheimer's disease and parkinson's disease actually anosmia is so much associated with these conditions that it actually can be used as a early predictor it can be used as a predictor for these diseases and in case anosmia is absent in these disorders you can actually should doubt whether the you should doubt your diagnosis of these conditions okay especially in parkinson's disease okay anosmia is very very common in parkinson's disease however in certain parkinson's plus syndromes like cortico basal degeneration and progressive supranuclear palsy anosmia is not a typical feature it's not very commonly seen okay next coming to the other rarer causes kalman syndrome so this is a syndrome where you have anosmia along with hypogonadism along with hypogonadism next multiple sclerosis and what are the drugs causing anosmia propyl thiouracil levodopa 
chemotherapeutic agents very very important and antihistamines and then basal meningitis okay caused by tuberculosis for example tuberculosis Korsakoff syndrome prion diseases like Creutzfeldt Jakob disease okay chromosomal disorders like down syndrome even turner syndrome even in turner syndrome you can have anosmia and Huntington's disease. So these are the causes of anosmia. So what causes you should not forget, which you're going, be, you're going to be commonly questioned on, you should not forget common cold, URT most common cause, presbyosmia, and then head injury, you should not forget head injury, tumors of the orbitofrontal surface, and neurodegenerative disorders. These causes you should not forget, at least you'll be able to tell these four to five causes. Okay. Now next coming to the other disorders of the olfactory nerve. Okay, so you have hyperosmia, when you have an acutely heightened sense of smell. Okay, so this is seen in migraine. So as you know in migraine, usually you have a visual aura. The most common aura in migraine is a visual aura. Rarely you can have olfactory aura where you're going to have an increased or heightened sense of smell. And then hyperemesis gravidorum. Then we have parosmia. So parosmia can be seen in psychiatric diseases. It can be seen post head injury. Okay, so remember post head injury can be seen in both in uh, post head injury can cause both anosmia as well as parosmia. And then sinusitis. All factory hallucinations, you remember at least one cause that is temporal lobe seizures. Temporal seizures is an important cause. Other psychiatric disorders like psychosis. And remember, all factory hallucinations is an important non motor manifestation of Parkinson's disease. Okay, so this is about the all factory nerve. Just remember, you should know the what is the method of examination and a few viva questions on the abnormalities of the first cranial nerve. Okay, thank you.